I'm here talking to, to um, Telecom CEO Paul Reynolds about um, Telecom post separation. Um, there's, in New Zealand, there's been this idea of free local calling, which is precious to us. We call it the Kiwi Share, the Telecom Service Obligation. Um, and um, the infrastructure that it's built on, the PSTN network, the voice copper network, and the switching network, is, um, is, could be described as being kind of ancient. Perhaps it's sort of 1980s technology, um, and and it's decaying. And the, meanwhile, the costs of our landlines are kind of expensive. It's it's in terms of our overall telecommunications costs into into a lot of households. Um, perhaps it's time to retire that network. Look, the um, uh, the PSTN, the, the phone network, that gives us free local calling. Mm. Um, you know, it's a technology we've relied on for a long time. Uh, every telecommunications operator in the world's got one. About four years ago, five years ago, um, the fashion was uh, all operators were looking at plans to shut them down and replace them with uh, voice over IP technology. Um, but you know something? It, it didn't work so well. And it's still, not, um, it's still not engineered anywhere to the standards of the good old PSTN. Um, so the world over, the operators and the manufacturers of the PSTN came together um, to improve the performance of the PSTN technology while, whilst we wait for voice over IP to deliver the same quality uh, and reliability and robustness. So we've been investing in, uh, in our PSTN, uh, the NEAC switches. Um, we've, you know, the, the, the program's been to uh, consolidate the network to, to replace, huge replacement of, um, uh, of components in the network that I've got uh, out of date and make so, so we, we can get the robustness and we'll keep the robustness and reliability that we've built. And we keep making phone calls for free. So New Zealand is pretty unusual. I mean, uh, you know, one, uh, in one definition of Auckland, almost nearly all way, between a third and a half the country lives in a, lo a local call area that's free. But within the context of a telecommunications budget in a household of about maybe $100, $120, yes. it's a very large component. And I think that we see, see Allcon's Genius product doing really quite well because it's attempting to try and take some of that cost out. And that can then be redeveloped and put into UFB and pay look for at, some look of I think, I think that customers look at what they want to buy, you know, they want to, and we, we're finding customers want to buy a package of services, they want a bundle of real fast broadband, good data caps that meet their, 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 their needs and their kids' needs, uh, calls that the incre where the incremental cost of a call is zero, uh, and you can do that in a number of technologies. I think what I would say is with, the, with telecoms packages, you get a lot of data, you get reliability and robustness, and you get a, a uh, you've got a voice platform that's incredibly reliable, works with all the devices in your house, um, and works. An incremental cost of a call is free. I think that's incredibly attractive to people. It's it's something that in other countries they'll look at with considerable envy. But I mean, fifty dollars a month is you've got to admit that's a significant part of the of the cost of. I mean, one of the obstacles to to um, the profitability of of the broadband network surely is the amount of money that's being spent. By those same customers on their on their landline services, which are comparatively um, dumb in terms of what they can do. Well, look, I, you know, I think customers buy a line. You know, typically, it's a copper line into the home at the moment, and, and in the future, it's going to be a fibre line into the home. And services over that line. You know, uh, uh, and there's various ways of delivering services over that line. For example, PSDN can be delivered over fibre, can be delivered over copper. Uh, voice over IP services you know, are typically a little bit less reliable, uh, but give some more some more flexibility. Typically, don't work with all the devices in your house. Customers have choice; mm. they can cho you know they can well, choose between reliability and stuff that works. Uh, they can choose a different package. Or, you know, as far as telecoms concerned, we're committed uh, to have the PSTN work that underpins our emergency services. Uh, underpins vital communications. Is it re does it really understand? I mean, the, the emergency services argument in terms of the recent disasters we've had, it's unquestionably the cell phone networks which 
which remained live and which were used by the public. Well, I think, I think, I think both work very well in that regard. They're both very strong in New Zealand, strongly engineered. Let me say you don't have problems with them occasionally, they're mm. very strong. Mm. Uh, and you wouldn't chuck it out for an IP service, I would posit. You know, I doubt if you'd find a major carrier in the world that would say that that would, that would give a better set of um, service metrics for emergency. Mm. Um, so we've got a, we've got a well-engineered set of services. Uh, customers can buy a bundle of services, broadband, voice, uh, with with good speed and a good evolution path. You know, it's all going to work over fibre as it comes through. Telecom customers can't currently buy VoIP services at home. We don't find people ask for VoIP. They ask for a package that's uh, reliable, affordable, and gives them. So they want voice. They but if they, but, been, but as far as they're concerned, if they plug their phone into a tele into a um, Ethernet thing and it works just like a phone and it dials just like a phone and but it has the additional capacity of being able to automatically transfer through to their mobile with with almost and and international calls at no charge. Well, customers buy broadband. You know, my, our customers use Skype, use other VoIP services like that. They use PSDN. They, they make huge choices. You can Our customers mm. are video conferencing to their kids that are on OE in mm. England all the time. Yeah. And as part of their broadband service, their customers are exercising their choice all the time. They, you know, some choose to go to another service provider, many choose to come back to telecom. What I'm saying to you is we have all the technology. Uh, we choose to engineer services that we think are really reliable, give great value, and provide a package that customers want. And we find a lot of people buy those. So you don't you don't think that there's a possibility to rebalance some of the costs and the revenues and revenues and the expense on the customer? in favour of IP services and out of voice? Our customers buy a voice service for the calls are free. Yeah, but I mean the calls, I mean on VoIP services the calls are effectively free As every, well. everywhere. The marginal cost of a call in New Zealand is pretty much free, whatever you do. Whether you use Skype, whether you use somebody's IP voice service, whether you use the PSPN. Thank you Paul. Thank you. Cheers.